Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel, Grab a Snack. Because we have a long video ahead of us, I am going to be doing my 2021 favorites. So far, we are halfway through 2021, so I wanted to select my favorite products for you that I've been loving up to this point. If you wanna see what I picked out, then just keep watching. Hi guys, if you're new here, my name is Morgan. I am a product knowledge enthusiast. I just love knowing anything and everything about all of the new makeup on the market and sharing my thoughts with you guys. And if you're new here, I like really love makeup. Like I love makeup. I love collecting makeup. I love my collection and any kind of cumulative favorites video always stresses me out a wee bit because I feel like I'm picking through my children. I really feel so much guilt in this video and I kept adding so many products as I was applying products because I know there's so many amazing products that I'm leaving behind in this video and I said screw it like it's, it's gonna be a long video. I, I just want to talk about makeup products that I've really been loving and this was cut down which is embarrassing. But without further ado, we're gonna get into the first product, which is going to be primers. I'm going in order of application, face, eyes, lips. And there are two primers that I've really been enjoying. We're gonna talk about the one that I'm wearing first. This is the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Hydrating Primer. And I actually received this in a PR package. It wasn't the main focus of the PR package. And this ended up being my favorite product. It is a mixture of hydrating and glow now I have normal to dry skin leaning more dry in the winter and then leaning more normal in the summer and this just gives the prettiest glow while also hydrating my dry skin I know glowy skin is very in especially now in the summertime this is an underrated product in my opinion it is a great primer for the summer and anybody who's looking for that hydrating glowy duo this is going to do it for you again playing more in the hydrating basis I have found my myself really enjoying and using the fourth ray oat face milk maybe not oat in particular I have a few different flavors if you will I have jasmine I have oat I have melon I just really like these because they are a quick layer of hydration before you put on your makeup and you know comparing it to the Armani this one really makes the skin glowy this one's not going to do that this just is a great base because it leaves your skin feeling more hydrated for the makeup to sit on top of it so I love this mostly because it cures my dry skin and it's just a really nice quick way to get some hydration before you put products on top and I forgot to mention this earlier but the way that I chose these products are these were products that have snuck their way into my everyday kind of routine because there were a lot of great products that I really enjoyed the quality of but in order to really narrow down my choices I chose the products that I find myself reaching for on a regular basis and incorporating into whatever makeup I'm doing for that day so these these are all very used and very loved by me. Let's get into foundations and 2021 has not been the year of foundations for me. They've come out with a lot of foundations, but none that I've really loved with the exception of like these two. These two are the best. So this one, hands down, is my favorite foundation to have launched this year. This is the Guerlain L'Essential High Perfection Foundation. Now this was a play off of a more dewy foundation and they came out with more of a matte foundation. And even though I have dry skin, I do like a matte foundation. I just feel like it makes the skin look a little bit more perfected because the glowiness is not going to emphasize texture and this really is a perfecting foundation it gives medium to high coverage and it just looks really beautiful on the skin it's what I'm wearing right now and I've had this eyelash in the right here for who knows how long but this by far my favorite foundation I've tried this year my favorite foundation to have released it literally makes my skin look perfect I have the shade O2N which is the perfect shade for me as well so that also plays a part in it but if you are looking for a perfecting foundation not necessarily natural this is the way to go and I always say I love luxury foundations because I feel like they give a finish to the skin that high-end and drugstore can't give this is that type of luxury foundation finish 
Now, this isn't readily available in the US. I believe you have to go through Selfridges to pick it up, but it is totally worth it. Next, we have something a little bit more light coverage. And I've definitely gotten more into light coverage makeup this year just because my skin has been better and I haven't really been leaving the house as much or doing a lot of activities. So when I just want my skin to look nicer, I go for something lighter weight. And Fenty Beauty released a complexion product that I really enjoyed. And I have to say, Fenty Beauty didn't have my favorite complexion products prior to this year. But you will see in the following <laughs> products that I'm going to be mentioned, Fenty killed it in complexion this year. So this Ease Drop Blurring Skin Tints, I believe, kind of had mixed reviews. I'm on the end where I really like it. I think it is blurring. I think it's lightweight and it still gives a good amount of coverage. It really just evens everything out on the skin and makes it look better, which is nothing more of what I could ask. Just because you want something light, it's a tint and it makes your skin look better and I find it wears really well. And I think what's the most kind of unique thing about this product is the amount of coverage that you get based on how it feels. So it feels extremely liquidy, lightweight, but you do get some coverage. I mean, it's not gonna give you full coverage, but compared to a lot of other skin tints on the market, this one is going to give you more coverage and it's blurring. And that also is another unique factor about this that I don't find with a lot of other products. So I've really been enjoying this for every day. Moving on to concealers. I have not been a fan of the concealers that have come out this year. And honestly, there really hasn't even been much. There's a new concealer recently that I've been enjoying and wearing a lot and following Fenty. It is the Fenty Beauty Bright Fix Eye Brightener. It took me a little bit to jump on board with this. I had to use it a few times, but then I noticed I kept reaching for it again and again and again. Now, this is not an on-camera concealer. If I'm filming, I really probably won't use it. I'm using it today, and I wish I had a bit more coverage, but as far as every day, I've been reaching for this a lot. It's the perfect concealer for those tinted moisturizers and those skin tints because I've said this multiple times before, but I do not like the look of a full coverage concealer with a skin tint. I feel like you can see the difference on the skin, high coverage versus low coverage. I like the low coverage, low coverage mix. So this is perfect for the lighter weight foundations that I've been wearing. It also kind of blurs the skin and just makes it look smoother and prettier. And I like that you can wear this alone. Now I had a bit of trouble finding my color. They're very, very light. A lot of them are, but it is forgiving because it is a more sheer formula. But I wear this a lot when I'm not even wearing foundation. If I just want to brighten up my under eyes, this blends in seamlessly with my natural skin, which is what a lot of concealers can't do. A lot of times I find if I wear just concealer, I need to do powder. I need to put it on a little bit more so it doesn't look so obvious that I'm wearing concealer. This one just blends in seamlessly while perfecting the skin and it doesn't look weird on its own. So a lot of times when I've had weddings and I'm wearing a mask, I'll just put this over to the areas that need it, especially the under eyes, and it looks perfectly fine. So this has been my favorite everyday concealer. Other than that, haven't liked the concealers that have come out with this year and honestly there weren't that many. I've just been playing with my same favorite concealers that have been my favorites for the last couple of years. But this is the new kit on the block that I've really been enjoying. Let's move in to powders now. Lots of powders did come out this year. I picked my top two for you guys. So the first one is by Dior. This is the Dior Backstage Face and Body Powder No Powder. I love this because it literally looks and feels like no powder. Everybody is very into the glowy kind of look and this holds the glow. It's not going to mattify the face too much and you really can't trace any powder on this skin either, but it does set. It will suck up your oils. I honestly believe that this would make a great touch-up powder as well, but it really does kind of finish off the skin without disrupting the base too much. So if you like a glow to your skin, but you do need some powder, maybe you're a little bit more oily, I highly recommend this. Or if you have dry skin, this is extremely hydrating. It's literally an invisible powder. I love it. It is awesome. I did want to talk about also a powder foundation. I'm a huge powder foundation fan. Honestly, I know everybody's into tinted moisturizers and skin tints right now. For me, in the summer, I prefer a powder foundation. I feel like it sucks up my oils, whereas a skin tint, which I still do wear, don't get me wrong, but I feel like those products make me a little bit too shiny, you know, and I don't have too shiny of skin, but I think powder foundations are underrated, especially in the summer, and Fenty 
came out with another great complexion product. They really stepped up their complexion game this year. So this is the Pro Filter Soft Matte Powder Foundation. It's really smooth on the skin. You can build up the coverage. I like to take just a big fat kabuki brush and put it all over my skin and it evens everything out. It has a great wear time and you really can't even tell that you're wearing a powder foundation. It looks like you're wearing just a regular foundation. It looks beautiful. It's perfecting. It evens everything out. You know, it's not going to give you too full of coverage. You probably could build it up to give you full coverage, but I think then it might start to look a bit too powdery. But if you just give a nice, even light layer to the skin, it's going to make your skin look really perfected, really even. And you're going to look like you're wearing foundation, but it's going to look so natural and it's going to feel so lightweight. So if you're on the market for powder foundation, I highly recommend this one. And if you have not tried powder foundation yet, you are missing out. I'm talking too much. I'm thirsty. A theme this year I've noticed. Cream products are in. I don't have as many cream products as I think you would hope for because again, I'm weird. I don't like cream products in the summer. They look beautiful. They look beautiful with a skin tint. Yes, I see why people like it, but I get so sweaty and oily looking so quickly. I just prefer powders in the summer, but go for creams in the winter because that's when your skin looks dry anyways. So these cream products are gonna hydrate the skin. I mean, do whatever you want. I'm the odd man out here, but I don't love cream products for this time of year, especially with a mask. Ugh. No. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to start off with my cream contour products. So the first one, she's pricey, but I think that's part of the reason why I reached for it so much is because I knew I spent an arm and a leg on it, but the formula is really, really nice. This is the Westman Atelier Face Trace Contour Stick. I have mine in the shade Biscuit, and this is the perfect contouring, but still giving you a little bit of bronze shade. You can see it's cool based, so it's not going to be warm on the skin, but I don't need too much warmth. I can just go in with like a powder bronzer that has a touch more warmth over top but I love the way that this blends. I love the color because it really does shade the face and it overall is just a solid cream product and the packaging is a yes. It's magnetic. It is so heavy like at least the packaging makes sense for what the price is. Do you need to spend this much on a cream contour stick? <laughs> no but if you are extra this is really beautiful. Now we're going to counteract that because I do have an affordable product that has a really beautiful full cream formulation and that is the elf cream contour palette so good you guys i am late to the game on this but it is awesome if you are looking for a cream contour palette not even a palette just a cream contour that is affordable please go for this so i have mine in the lighter shade and you can see they even have a highlight shade which i did use today and you'll see in the demonstration it blends so easily onto the skin. Now, how the formula differs between the Westman Atelier and this is the Westman Atelier has a little bit more powderiness to it, so I think it does last longer, whereas the e.l.f. is maybe a touch more oily, but it makes it work out so much better. And anyways, for the price, you really can't beat it. So if you've been looking for a good cream contour palette, this one is accessible, it's affordable, it really is a beautiful palette. And I have one cream Cream blush. Now, I've been loving a lot of different cream blushes lately. You know, the Melt has a really great formula. NARS has a decent formula. But the one that I found myself reaching for a lot, and again, it has to probably do with the price that I paid, it's another Westman Atelier product. She really does have a beautiful cream blush formula. So this is the Baby Cheeks Blush Stick in the shade Petal. And it is this beautiful neutral kind of pink shade so it goes with every look that you do anyway so that's probably also another reason why I reach for it is just how universal the shade is. I personally like to go in with the butt end of my sponge and press it onto the skin. I feel like that presses it into the foundation to make it look more seamless but actually when I did this demo it was over the powder. I had already applied the powder and you can see it is completely ignoring the powder. It works great over a powder. It works great on its own. The color is Itself is beautiful and these last a really long time as they should but I mean these Westman Atelier products they have beautiful cream products I'm not a big fan of cream highlighters so I can't speak on their cream highlight formula I do have one I'm not as big of a fan of it but I just don't like cream highlighters in general but the bronzer and blush awesome all right let's move over to powders starting off with the powder bronzer that I've probably used the most this year 2020 was the year for powder bronzers they came out with some of the best bronzers so there really wasn't a brand new 
bronzer formula that knocked my socks off except for this so this it wasn't necessarily new but it was new to me this is from a Canadian brand called Vesca I actually had the pleasure of doing a partnership with them earlier in the year but I truly do love this bronzer I have mine in the shade kissed by Santorini these are called the soft matte bronzing powders this has the perfect amount of warmth to it it's like the perfect color for that West Minutilli A you know it's not orange or anything it does have a neutral undertone to it but it does have that warmth that's going to bring the bronziness to the face these are a little bit more pigmented but what is great about this range is they have so many colors and they really do work so well for the fairest of the fair and they have a very very deep color as well the formulation blends on to the skin like butter I just love this bronzer formula I've reached for it regularly over the past six months it's one of the best also this one's a little bit surprising and I didn't even expect it to end up being a favorite but in terms of what I've just been wearing and reaching for consistently it is these Jaclyn Cosmetics bronze and blushing duos and I know she's come out with more blushes recently the formula is completely different than these but I think the reason that I've been reaching for these recently is because they are so easy to use. They're completely foolproof. You're never going to apply too much. They're this like baked formulation. And I personally prefer the shade Pick Me Up and Oh Honey. It just shows up a little bit better. So make sure you pick up the one that's the correct shade and you don't need every color of these, but they blend onto the skin with so much ease. You know, there's not too much opacity to it. So if you're a beginner with makeup or you're very heavy handed, you cannot go wrong with these. And the blush as well, it's like almost, I don't want to say they're silica because they're not, but they're just so smooth and they apply with so much ease on the skin. They'll blend out any which way that you want them to. They'll blend, ugh, they're so good and I wasn't super duper in love with them in my initial review and I'm still not but the formulation is just so easy to use that I can't stop reaching for it. I don't know what's going on. I think that covers it for bronzers. We are going to move on to blush. Now this year it's a crazy time for blush. So many blush formulations have come out and I love it. I love blush and not only have a lot come out, but a lot of good ones have come out. So we are going to start off by talking about the one that I'm wearing on top of my cream blush, which is this Laura Mercier blush. These are the blush color infusions. This one is in the shade Passion Fruit. Now this is the only Laura Mercier individual blush that I own. The next Sephora VIB sale, I plan on purchasing more colors, but this formulation, beautiful. Now I can't speak for the general formulation because I don't know if they're all the same. This is the only one that I own, but it blends beautifully into the skin. This particular color goes with every look. It's just the perfect everyday soft pink and the sheen is so 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 subtle it doesn't even really emphasize texture as a normal highlighting blush would it's not even highlighting it just has a healthy sheen to it that really does kind of replicate the natural texture of the skin and don't get me started about how easily it blends onto the skin anyways this is like my new favorite blush formula nobody was talking about this really but it's awesome and i also was not expecting to put these in this video quite yet i've been taking my time with testing these really figuring out what colors I love and along the way of doing that I found that I really enjoyed reaching for them and incorporating them into every day. Pat McGrath came out with the most beautiful color range for her blushes. So the two that I've been loving. For a more everyday wear I highly recommend the shade Nude Venus. You can't go wrong with this shade. It's gonna go with every look that you do. And then if you like more warm tones or you're looking to complete your warm toned look I would definitely say pick up Desert Orchid. This actually I think is my favorite shade in the line because I'm really into cooler, pinkier blushes, even mauve as well. I've never really been into too warm of blushes. I just feel like they don't complement my skin tone very well. This is the first warm shade that I am in love with. It really completes any warm look that I am doing. Normally I'll go with something peachier if I am wearing a warm look because orangey blushes, they just don't look good on me. This is the first one that does. It also has a beautiful golden sheen and I wasn't going to sugarcoat it in my review. The formulations on these are good, but they didn't really stand out to me. But I have to say, I find myself continuously reaching for these formulations again and again. And to me, that really is the true test of how much I love a formula and how good a formula is. Is, is it 
unique enough that I find myself reaching for it? Is it easy enough to use that I find myself using it in my everyday routine? And for these, that is for certain. So I really do love these. One last blush palette and then we are done talking about blush. And this is a newer product, but man, oh man, do I love it. This is the NARS Orgasm on the Beach palette. I wasn't sure how much I was gonna love it because NARS does come out with a lot of blush palettes. And I'll be honest, yes, it might be a bit overkill, but I love a good NARS blush palette. But this one to me, really special. It's a beautiful glowy blush formula. So if you don't like texture being emphasized, maybe you're very porous in the center of your face, you know, you just don't want a glowy blush, then absolutely do not pick this up. But if you love a glowy blush, this palette is perfection. I think it has some of the most beautiful tones, the perfect pigmentation, very easy to blend out. It also has a couple highlighters that are very pretty as well. And for me, I've been using this more so as a layering palette. I even layered a little bit today of the orgasm shade on the apple of my cheeks to add that extra dimension to the cheek. So I'll use this to finish off my cheeks. I'll use it as the only blush on my cheek. And I don't know, it's just a really solid palette. I've really been enjoying this ever since I've gotten it. And it's one of my new favorites from NARS. I have a newfound appreciation for glowy blush that I didn't once have. So I have some other NARS palettes that do have the kind of glowy blush look, but this one, so good. Okay, I do have one highlight that I've been using and abusing and I feel like you saw it coming because it's awesome. This is the Pat McGrath Labs Divine Glow Highlighter in the shade Golden Nectar. Pat McGrath really had to play around with her highlights before she came out with one that I really enjoyed. Her last Divine Rose highlight was beautiful. I really like that. But then this one came out and this one is so much better. This is by far the best formulation she's come out with and I mean it's really really smooth. It has that smooth look in the pan as well that does translate onto the skin as well it also gives the most beautiful glow to the skin and what is so unique about Pat McGrath's formulations and the colors in her line is that they work for everybody this highlight looks good on everybody now I can see if you're very fair that maybe this might not work for you but it's just crazy to me how versatile her products can be even if it's just one highlight shade I have one last palette to talk about and I forgot to mention if you're like Morgan where are the eyeshadow palettes I'm gonna do a whole separate favorite eyeshadow palettes so far this year video so that's why there aren't any eyeshadow palettes in this video but there is kind of one but it's a full face palette so that's why I'm putting it in today's video and I I'm obsessed with it. So obsessed that I lost it. I didn't really lose it, but I forgot where I put it because I pull it out so often. And I was tearing up this room earlier today. I forced Jose to come up here and he helped me look. Like I was having a heart attack. I thought I was gonna have to buy a new one of these and I loved it so much that I felt a genuine loss when I couldn't find it and I was gonna instantly order a new one. But luckily we found it. It was in my eyeshadow palette drawer. And I guess, I don't know why I put it there. Anywho, this is the Charlotte Tilbury instant look of love in a palette, pretty blush beauty. I don't know, this is just kind of an everyday version of me, you know? If I want quick everyday makeup, this is the one that I'm going to go to. I love the colors in here. They're neutral, but still very romantic and soft. Everything in here is perfection. It really is an instant look in a palette for me and my skin tone. I love that she has her Airbrush Flawless Face Powder in here because that really does perfect and finish off a look. Just everything in here is perfect to me. So when I just want to do a quick full face without having to grab too many products, wasting time on that, this has every color that I would want. A pinky blush, a beautiful champagne highlight, a nice cooler toned bronzer over here, and then just some really light natural toned glittery eye look. It's the perfect look for me. She did have a deeper palette, which I liked, but I didn't love. This is the one that I personally like for my skin tone, but these are perfect. I love them. Taking a look, Complexion has really won so far in 2021 because I don't have too many products left for eyes and lips. But let's get into it. Though a category that did excel this year so far has been eyebrow products. There's been a lot of new staple eyebrow products that I have started incorporating into my routine. And that's a big feat because we all have been using the same eyebrow pencil for the last few years. Benefit, ABH, I mean, they just can't be beat. Well, this year it happened. So we're gonna start off with what I'm wearing in my eyebrows. And that 
is the new Kosa Brow Collection. These are pretty new. So the brow pencil is called the Brow Pop. And then I also really love the Airbrow Gel as well. We'll start off with the packaging. You guys know I'm obsessed with the packaging. But the pencil itself, I love that it's not too creamy. It actually is a little bit more stiff and powdery feeling. But I like that. I feel like I have more control. I feel like a lot of times with pencils sometimes they don't lay down the pigment that I want this shows up on my skin very well but it's not too pigmented it's like the perfect consistency for me if you don't like a drier eyebrow pencil then you won't like this but I love it and the brow gel really does hold my brows up in a comfortable way you know it doesn't make my brows too hard but I think what I like the most about this brow gel is the spoolie itself it's really short so it really allows for a lot of control and the fibers on here are very close together so it doesn't separate the brow hairs it just perfectly kind of brushes them out to give your eyebrows a fuller look so love that as well the other eyebrow pencil that i have in my brows is the huda beauty balm brows i have mine in the shade medium brown this is the tiniest little eyebrow pencil that i've ever seen in my life and this is perfect for detail work i wouldn't recommend running this through the entire eyebrow because this is going to go faster than water but if there's certain areas that are really sparse and you really want to get hair like strokes this is the product that you need to have i like to use this in the beginning of my my eyebrow because it really creates the most hair-like strokes I've ever seen from an eyebrow product and I used to struggle with that technique but this really does give those false hair-like strokes and I love it I highly recommend it but again don't put this all throughout your brows don't let this be the only product that you use because you'll be wasting so much money the next eyebrow product if I want a quick brow this is a little bit thicker but it is dirt cheap you guys this is the elf instant lift brow pencil and it's so good it is a little bit more creamy than what I normally prefer but it really does deposit the perfect amount of color and it is a great way just to very quickly run through my brows to fill in those sparse areas it's nothing too precise but I like that it's just for a quick everyday brow I've been enjoying this it's only a couple bucks I did want to mention this to you guys because it's so cheap and it really does get the job done and I've been reaching for this very very frequently it really is a regular in my routine and when I run out of this I definitely plan on repurchasing it one last brow product y'all this is from Ardell I have never heard anybody else talk about besides me but I use it almost every day this is the Ardell limitless enhancer not even sure if they would still sell this haven't seen this really in retail except for at the Ardell website and it's just a cream eyebrow product but it's so creamy what I've been using this for is putting it right underneath my brow and then taking a synthetic brush and cleaning up down here because I have not gotten my brows professionally done in over a year and a half. I've been taking care of them and they're not perfect. They're a little bit messy but this makes them look a lot more cleaned up. It's really quick. I know ABH has a similar product. I have one from Sigma that I use as well but something about this blends in better than all of those. It doesn't look too chalky. It's just so creamy. I love it. It's so easy to use and manipulate. There is one mascara that I've been obsessed with and that is a big deal because I do not have the best lashes. For me, mascara is just to coat my lashes, make them look a little bit more black. They never really actually build up my lashes. But the Maybelline Falsies Lash Lift. I got this in a PR package, didn't think anything of it, was just trying new makeup, opened this up, put it on, it changed the game for me. It's one of my new favorite drugstore mascaras my lower lashes are never visible but with this they are visible so i can only imagine how this would look on somebody that actually has really nice lashes it's a bit more of a dry formula which is normally what people who have shorter lashes prefer because it actually gives the mascara something to build on so it gives the perfect combination of volume and length which is very rare and i don't know i just really like it i feel like it makes my lashes look good it doesn't really flake on me either a lot of times with drier mascaras they do flake like crazy this one doesn't let's talk false lashes I am pretty set in my ways when it comes to uh, false lashes I stick to my Ardell naked lashes I stick to some of my favorite Lily lashes but there's a small indie brand that reached out to me and asked to send me lashes and I think they have a beautiful collection so this brand is called black label and I asked them to send me they're more natural lashes because they have some really crazy dramatic voluminous ones 
These are the more natural ones. I am currently wearing the style brazen and these are the dramatic lashes for me, but they are perfect. They look so good on the eyes. They're very, very black and they are mink. So if you only wear synthetic lashes, then don't buy these. But these are beautiful mink lashes. I think they are a great price as well. And I prefer the more natural ones of their range because they're a little bit more affordable. And on my eye size, they look really nice. And even then, these are pretty dramatic. These are four dramatic eye makeup looks for me. But when I need a dramatic lash, these are the ones that I go to. Final category is lips. And lips is definitely the most boring category for my face favorites video just because I didn't wear much lips honestly I stuck to the few formulas that I knew and love but let's talk about what I use for hydration the Milani avocado butter lip mask is a great dupe for the Laneige lip masks now this is a little bit more gel like and so it feels a little bit more wet on the lips but it really does give the same effect and level of hydration it smells really good it's a lot more affordable and it's been sitting on my desk I love the way that it smells. Get it for the smell. I love the Laneige as well. I just discovered this dupe and I've just been reaching for it a little bit more and it's really really nice. Milani side note has come out with some banging products this year. I've absolutely loved the collections that they've come out with but this one so good and their primers also really bomb. The lip liner that I discovered this year that I've really been enjoying and not only the formulation but the color range of is the Natasha Denona I Need a Nude Lip Crayon. I also like the Huda Beauty one, but I've been using these for longer. So Natasha has a way with colors. Her nude lip colors, beautiful. The one that I've been using the most is Natasha. It's a little bit more of like a peachy skin tone shade. It adds just a little bit of depth. Her formula is very, very creamy. It's not necessarily as long wearing as say Charlotte Tilbury or Pat McGrath. Those stay a little bit longer than these, but I just love the colors that she has. They're very easy to use. They are pretty creamy if you prefer a creamier lip liner formula. I don't mind a drier lip liner formula, but this one is really comfortable and it goes perfectly with her pre-existing lipstick line, which probably one of my favorite lipstick formulas ever. So that's another reason that I've reached for these so often is just they go with the colors that I already have because I own so many of her lipsticks. So yeah, that's a really good lip liner to try out. And while I'm on the topic, Huda Beauty also launched a really good lip liner for formula this year. Continuing onward, I do have another Natasha Denona lipstick and I recently mentioned it so you guys know it's one of my favorites but with her love collection that launched earlier in the year, she came out with the eyeshadow palette that I'm wearing now which is the mini love palette and this lipstick and normally I pass on the additional lipsticks that she launches with her palettes just because I have so many lipsticks but for some reason this lipstick called to me and I'm so glad I ended up picking it up. So you can still get this at Sephora. This is the I Need a Nude Lipstick in the shade Amorosa. I wear a lot of cooler toned colors, a lot of pinks, a lot of purples. If you've been looking for the perfect lipstick to go with your pink and purple eye looks, this is the way to go. It does lean a bit cooler, but it really can go with warm and cool looks. And I have gotten quite a few questions on Morgan, what lips look good with purple eyeshadows? It's this one. This is the go-to color whenever I'm wearing a pink or purple eye look. It's the best. And here we are, ladies and gentlemen, on to our very last product. And oh my gosh, two years ago, I would have hated this product. But obviously, because of masks, I think a lot of our lip preferences has changed. I mean, that's why I don't have very many. We, I wear masks to go out. But the perfect, perfect lip formula for mask wearing are the Maybelline Superstay Matte Inks. These ain't going nowhere. I'm sorry, I did not swatch them for you because they would be on my arms for three days and won't come off. So I'm just gonna spare myself and not swatch these, but if you are looking for a lip formula that's not gonna budge, that's not gonna transfer, these are it. The best, most long-wearing liquid lipsticks. Are they drying? Yes, please prep your lips. But in terms of how functional they are, even though they might not be the most comfortable, dang, they do their job. Now, I've picked three colors for you to share my favorites. My favorite pink that's like bright but still neutral is Lover. I kind of have it mixed in with the lipstick right now. I also really like Fuller 
because I've been trying to get more into pink lipsticks and this one is not going anywhere. When you're wearing a brighter or maybe a more deep color, I do prefer to use a liquid lipstick because they're not gonna get all over my face. So I like this one a lot. And then my more neutral brown kind of shade that I've been loving, they came out with like a coffee collection, Chai Genius. Great neutral brown shade. So they're awesome. I mean, uncomfortable, but really awesome. All right, you guys, I'm sorry. I just love makeup so much I couldn't cut it down too much. This video had to be long. There was no other way I was gonna do it. But there we are. Those are my favorite products that have launched thus far in 2021. Keep an eye out because I will also be doing a video on my favorite eyeshadow palettes for 2021. <sighs> I love it. Okay. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you aren't subscribed to my channel already, I would love it if you would consider taking the time to do so. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye guys. Have a good one.